Um, so you're, you, so basically, you're saying that that consumers are really interested in knowing what is the, what is uh, you know the company ethos, and will then buy, buy the product. If they're educated consumers, it turns out that maybe someone who is poor and just wants the lowest price for something, it won't. He or she wouldn't even know if the company is responsible exactly. uh, for social things. Yeah. But as more and more people get educated, and let's take a country as an example. Let's take everyone in Sweden is educated. Okay. You know, Sweden, Swedish people would not buy from a company that isn't practicing sustainability. Mm -hmm. There's no choice okay. in Sweden. You better practice it. Um, in the United States, maybe it's like that, but not all the way. Sure. And maybe in India, Nobody maybe cares. five to ten, fifteen percent will yeah. care about yeah. it. Maybe it's premature to, to go spiritual and to go higher purpose for most of your market. It depends. There are some products that are selling in highly educated markets, True. and there it will work. Several uh, you know, CEOs of holding companies, advertising, marketing conglomerates that you meet, beat the Martin Sorrells or the Maurice Levies of the world, or it actually be chief marketing officers, uh, one of the key grouses that they put on the table is the fact that there is just too much interference from procurement. Right from the pr procurement division of the company, yeah. and uh, this has really come to light after the grand the recession that we've all just seen that we're just kind of coming out of. But because of that, of, of, because of the kind of pressure that marketing has on it to either slash budgets or just become less of a cost center, they find that their powers have somewhat been diminished. The, the, but whose powers have been diminished? The marketing teams. The problem that is facing uh, marketers is that the CEO along with the chief financial officer, want to a measure of Roma. Roma is return on marketing investment. Uh, ro re Romi or Romai, it depends on whether it's return on marketing assets or on investment. Mm -hmm. And those numbers don't exist yet. And what if you're getting a zero return? Maybe we don't, shouldn't spend money on marketing. Maybe if marketing is largely promotional money, use the money to make a better product. Don't use it to just uh, sell the existing products. Sure. So there will be all kinds of shifts going on in, in how much money marketing should get. Right. This is why I urge the CMO to become a friend of the CFO. Okay. Because the CFO is your enemy sure. in marketing. Right. Because he or she keeps telling the CEO, we're spending too much money on marketing. That's true. Now, if the two go down to have lunch together and work out a metric system that will satisfy the CFO, he may become your best ally. True. <laughs> so. Well, I'm sure, the, I'm, I'm sure Indian marketers are paying heed to what you're saying. But, you know, I want to talk about um, the CMO today. Yes. Uh, and the fact is most CMOs today are not net netizens. Right? That's correct. They are not um, digital citizens. Uh, and the fact that they have to suddenly, um, you know, take on so much is a little bit intimidating. They're doing it, but they really do, they're not very comfortable yeah. with it. It's and not they admit their it. natural leading. They so, admit that they, yeah, yeah. they aren't adequately trained in digital. Given that, do you think, uh, given the complex landscape we live in, do you think CMOs should be as old as they are while running these companies? I've been predicting that uh, marketing will be run by younger and younger people in the future. I can imagine the CMO of a company being 20 years old. Yeah? Yeah. How fast do you see that happening? I don't, uh, I have no measures of sure. what's really happening to the average age of the people running marketing. I think the average age of the people in marketing will go down. Mm. And whether the top person is going to, uh, remember, experience is very important too. Mm -hmm. Experience could is something that the younger people don't have. You don't want to throw it away unless it's blocking what the younger people should be doing. So um, I would say that um, uh, the average uh, that marketing departments will. As, let me bring in as an answer to your question what we mean by big data. Yeah. Big data is so important now. We are at a point which we never thought we would be at, where we can we know a lot about any individual customer, mm -hmm. the media they use, the products they buy, when they buy these products, and so on. And that's all in big data. Now, big data is going to be the repository of 
of, of our insights. There, if we can look at trends in big data, if we can look at segments in big data, we will have clues to how to change our price, our product, and so on and so forth. So marketing will become much more scientific. We're moving from art to science. By the way, I don't want to use, lose creativity. The two most important things in marketing is to have left brain people and right brain people. Right brain is used for creative uh, people, left brain for an, uh, analytical people. Both are important. But what's getting very popular now is hiring people who are good at marketing analytics mm -hmm. so they can look at big data and draw insights about the customer. So basically what you're saying is that marketing will become a lot more geeky. Yes, <laughs> right. Uh, and, you... and that's bad for people who just are into marketing because they had a course in advertising and sure. thought, I want to learn how to do some ads. Right. It's right. A, it gets a different flavor.